All right, who wins? Three Finger Sukuna from season one or Team Gojo? We're going to talk about that and a bunch of other spoiler-free questions straight from you guys. Alrighty, let's not waste any time and jump into this first question from Flint about Gojo versus Sukuna. Now, we could split this up to pre-awakened Team Gojo and post-awakened Team Gojo, but the more I think about it, I don't think it matters. Obviously, Three Finger Sukuna just wipes the floor with pre-awakened Team Gojo because he doesn't have reverse curse technique. He doesn't have purple and red because of that as well. And then he obviously doesn't have the domain, right? So really no chance because even though Sukuna would only be at three fingers, he still has his whole toolkit, right? He can still do the domain expansion. He could still do simple domain. Like he destroys pre-awakened Team Gojo. But honestly, even post-awakened Team Gojo... I think I got to give the edge to Three Finger Sukuna still just because he has that entire toolkit. And a post-awakened Team Gojo, although he has RCT in red and purple, he doesn't have his domain. I mean, honestly, I guess we don't know when Gojo finally achieved the domain, but I think it's probably fair to say that wouldn't be considered Team Gojo, even though, you know, maybe he would have been 18 when he did it. But when people say Team Gojo, they mean Hidden Inventory Gojo, right? And Hidden Inventory Gojo did not have his domain. So I think for that reason, I still got to give it to Sukuna. Would love to hear all y'all's thoughts on this. All right, y'all, next up, we've got a series of questions from Paul and Gavin. And let me move out the way real quick so y'all can pause and read if you want to. But before we dive into these, I just want to say that I think it's really awesome that you and your son watch anime together. Uh, growing up in my family, you know, I was the weirdo for watching anime. It would have been cool to have somebody else, you know, to connect with on that level. So I think this is really special. Uh, but so for the first question here, uh, Gavin was actually wondering if the person from the juvenile detention center that Megami and Yuji like argue over saving could that be the person that ran over Rika in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero? And this is such a cool idea. I had never heard of this or never thought of this. And so I was excited. I was like, whoa, that would be such a cool little Easter egg. But unfortunately, I looked into it and the dates just don't, uh, they don't match up. The timeline wouldn't make sense. But really cool idea. Uh, the next question is about Naobito Zinin, the leader of the clan. Why does he still take missions? And this is interesting, you know, because he is like 70. So like, why is this man still putting his life in danger? And obviously this isn't a question that ever gets like explicitly explained in the manga. But I think it's just, you know, he's kind of built that way. He's a person who's very arrogant and wants to prove his strength. So, you know, he doesn't even like talk to people or give people the time of the day if he thinks they're beneath him. So I think he just likes to throw all the fight, likes to go out there and prove himself and bring honor to himself and his clan. So, you know, he's probably going to do it till the wheels fall off. So our next question here is about LaRue and his curse technique. Uh, for those of you guys that don't remember, he was at the end of season two. He's the shirtless guy with hearts for areolas uh, but he was also in JJK Zero he's part of uh, Ghetto Squad so as far as his curse technique I would love to know but he seems to be pretty strong like he steps in between some people when they're bickering not that you have to be like stronger than people to do that but it's definitely like a ballsy move right so I, I honestly don't even have like a good guess like maybe the hearts on his chest or some sort of clue as to what this dude's about but uh yeah unfortunately i just have no idea and then the final question here is about yuji and if he'll get his rightful death uh and we won't be talking about any spoilers here but just if you recall at the beginning of the series uh yuji's grandpa tells him that he's strong he should help people and try to die surrounded by loved ones unlike him who's you know dying in the hospital alone aside from yuji um so i think uh it's tough man it's tough because there's also that quote from gege that is basically like Amongst Gojo and the first years, so Megami, Nobara, and Yuji, either one will die and the rest will live, or all will die and one will live. So thinking about how Yuji might play into that is interesting, because if Yuji survives, it means everyone else died, right? Which would be like the worst possible thing for Yuji, especially given what his grandpa said. So like kind of happy ending amongst those two choices at least in that the main character lives but i think it would be tragedy for him like i think he may not recover from that even so amongst those possibilities i think it would be a much happier ending for yuji if he was the one to pass away maybe in a self-sacrificial play or at least playing some pivotal role in saving the world and saving everyone else and the other three get to live so you know I guess that would be my preference amongst those two choices. But again, who knows if Gege is even going to live up to that. He did say that, you know, several years ago at this point, or not several, but a few years ago at this point. And, you know, his plans might have changed. Um, but yeah, I, I hope Yuji does get the rightful death as opposed to living in tragedy and remorse and regret. 
Next up, we've got this question from Bakari on Yuji and Toto versus the Disaster Curses Shibuya versions. So this is interesting, right? Because Yuji and Toto are a hell of a duo. They put the beat down on folks. We saw them do it to Hanami. We saw them do it to Mahito. But both of those characters have domain expansions. In Hanami's case, Hanami was about to do it, but Gojo intervened. In Mahito's case, he couldn't do it because of Sukuna, and he didn't want to touch Sukuna's soul. So assuming Sukuna isn't going to intervene in these battles, which I'm assuming that's the scenario you want, because obviously if Sukuna intervenes, they win. Um, but if Sukuna's not intervening, as much as I want to pick the boys here, I think the Disaster Curses all win because they all have domain expansions. And Toto does know Simple Domain, but that's only going to buy him so much time, right? And Yuji does not know Simple Domain. So he's going to get cooked against all four of them because all four of them have domain expansions. Um, the only exception being maybe Mahito because, because he touches the soul. So maybe Mahito wouldn't use it and it would play out exactly like we saw in Shibuya. But assuming everyone's using their full toolkit, I think the boys get cooked, man, unfortunately. Next up, we've got this question from Caden on why didn't Dagon's fish work against Toji in the show? And there's a couple of angles to come at this answer, depending on how specifically you're asking this. So let's just handle a couple of them. So first of all, remember that Megami was interfering with Dagon's barrier of his domain, which effectively made it so his sure hit effect wasn't going off. However, that wouldn't have even mattered for Toji. Because he's heavenly restricted and has zero cursed energy, he couldn't be hit by a sure hit effect anyway. Because the way that functions is by targeting targeting cursed energy so toji is an anomaly in that way however if you're talking more about how those enormous fish like consumed toji and he got like completely covered you know if that's the case that was really just like an aura moment from toji because that doesn't happen in the manga um they draw out that fight in the show and it's amazing what they do with it but in the show like toji makes even quicker work of dagon and like no fish ever you know eat him or touch him really at all long story short he's just him Next up, we've got this question from Montana on where are all the members of the Gojo clan during this? And great question. Simple answer is Gege just doesn't write about them, so we don't know. I did put out a longer video, like, only on this subject. If you want to check that out, I'll link it in a pinned comment below. But honestly, that is the answer. It's just Gege hasn't told us anything about them. Next up, we got this question from Nicholas on if the Sword of Extermination could destroy one of Sukuna's fingers. And unfortunately, no. So for anybody that needs a reminder, the Sword of Extermination is Maharaga's sword, and it is coated in positive cursed energy, which makes it lethal to curses. But Sukuna's finger isn't a curse, it's a cursed object. But even beyond that, it is protected by a series of binding vows that essentially make it invulnerable. And we know this because Gojo tells us as much at the start of the story when he's explaining all of the finger stuff to Yuji. He tells them that they tried every which way to destroy these things and they just couldn't do it. And not only does Gojo have access to positive cursed energy the same way the Sword of Extermination does, but he also has access to purple, which is basically existence erasure for the most part. And that doesn't even work on the finger. So yeah, the only way to destroy the fingers is basically to have somebody like Yuji eat them and then kill Yuji. Next up, we've got this question from Jose who asks, if somebody took Gojo's eyes, could they use the six eyes? Uh, and this is interesting, right? Kind of like the Sharingan from Naruto. But unfortunately, I don't think this is the case. I mean, I don't know why I said unfortunately, but I just don't think it works that way. Um, there's been no evidence or anything that really points to this. And I think if this were the case, there would be some evidence that pointed to this in the history of JJK. Next up, we got this question from Ethan who asks, how was Jogo able to kill Naobito in Shibuya? And this is a great question because Naobito is fast, second only to Gojo. So shouldn't he have been able to outrun the flames? And this is more explained in the manga. The show didn't do as good a job, but the reason Naobito got caught like that was because he had lost his arm and he was off balance. So he was not used to the movements he had to make with one arm because as you know his technique works by plotting out his own movements and if he deviates from that he gets frozen so that's how jogo was able to catch him finally we had this generous donation from on myoto but there was no comment with it i did look through my dms to see any usernames like this but i didn't see any so i don't know if you just sent this for love and support or if you had a question that just got lost in translation somewhere so if you did hit me in the comments or in the dms but either way thank you so much y'all i'm out of time in this video but thank you to everyone and i will see you in the next one